gosh. She's under a lot of pressure. There you go. Straight down. All right, welcome back to CNC Equipment's YouTube channel. We've got uh, a little final drive project for you today. If you guys have been watching, you know that uh, this come off of 850J that we fixed up. It's sold and long gone, but uh, I'm tired of this thing sitting around in the shop, aren't you, Kevin? Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you guys watched those previous videos, I'll try to link them down below in the description. This thing come in. Kevin's gonna give it the wiggle test. What kind of tolerance is this, sir? Well, I don't think it's supposed to be a half inch. A couple thousands. So, uh, <laughs> you guys watched that video. That dozer was cannibalized. They took parts off of it. They put new parts back on it. So this is new sprockets. Looks like a new outer ring gear housing. But as you guys can see, it's pretty well trashed. I don't know what they did. This is the outer planetary. These are what they call the planet gears they revolve around the sun shaft that's in the middle but it's definitely tore up i don't know if they put it together improperly or didn't put oil in it there was no oil in this system um you see these bolts is loose in here don't even know what that bolt is um this part is not new it looks more original to the tractor so we can get some of these gears aftermarket we can get them from john deere too they're very expensive this final drive from john deere I'd have to look the price up, but somewhere in the neighborhood of about $25,000, so U.S. dollars. It's not cheap. So, uh, how many hours is on that dozer? It was like eight or 900, I think. Yeah, but this part's new for whatever reason. I don't know if they didn't know what they was doing, but uh, this sun gear is ruined. We're going to take it apart and see if we can rebuild it. If we can, we're going to rebuild it, put it up on the shelf for next time or somebody else. Um, I've actually never been into this part there's a brake housing on the back I'll probably show you that later but uh hopefully they've not messed anything up in here but unfortunately we have to take it apart and check it all out so why is there a bulldozer coming in i know you guys can't see anyway we're gonna get after it here kevin's taking off the sprocket segments and then i think we'll take this ring of bolts here and take off this housing here and see what's going on can you find a tight one? I want one was tight. That one was not tight. Just shape it. There you go. Good and tight. Oh my gosh. What are these, like five foot pounds? I think those shims, those shims are supposed to be under there, not under the bolt heads. Huh. Are you sure? I'm looking a book. Maybe they're extras. Maybe you keep them. I'm pretty sure those go under here, but I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> something's not right here. <laughs> so, uh, take the plate off with your bolts, take yep. the plate off, then you remove the shims. Ah, uh, got I kind of feel like got we, this backwards. Yeah. yeah, the book is. I kind of yeah. feel like uh, <laughs> somebody may have not put that together right. Hmm. All right, that means this should lift up. up off here. I just gotta get it rigged up.
I see nothing wrong here. Dirt where the oil is supposed to be. <laughs> That's supposed to be a bearing. Where did all those pieces go? But wait, there's more. <laughs> They're somewhere in here. Somewhere. The other part of the seal's not even here, Kevin. Uh, it's like he just throwed it back together and drove it. Maybe they were in battle. In battle. That's that we can only hope. <laughs> There's a reason for that. Hmm. Well, <laughs> well, well. Well, well, well. It's looking good, isn't it? <laughs> Promising so far. It sure is. Well, we're going to do a little inspection work here and see what we got. Okay. like Jenga, bud. Set that up there. A big snap ring, okay. Is that what that is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was looking, this is actually two pieces. You can get this outer ring gear and this center section is two different things. So if you damage one, I guess you can replace it. Fun fact about these final drives, they were made in Spain. Oh. Just like all Clint Eastwood spaghetti western movies. <laughs> I think I don't know. That's where. Yeah, that's made in Spain. Is that where Clint, East, Clint Eastwood movies are made at? They wasn't made here. That's why they're called spaghetti westerns. That's in Italy, though, right? We're getting it all wrong. That used to be a bearing cage. Hey. There used to be little round hot dog looking things in there. These things? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there they are. Yummy. There's a couple. Hmm. We should probably get them back out. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Don't we go get the snap on 5000? Is that nice? Oh, that one's tight. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Huh. <laughs> you got one bad impact, dude. First. Yeah. All right, Mr. Kevin is putting in what they call jack bolts. We're jack this side over here, Jack Master. So they got threaded holes in the back side. You can push up and bust this housing loose. Sorry, we need more power. Need some more leverage. Let me get that up. See what's going on under there. Got it. Kind of go over that table, yeah. We gotta take that sun gear out, Kevin. Let's we'll shut her off there. Hey, it's just like jingle bells in here, bud. It is almost Christmas time. Did you know that? Is it? Yeah. You gotta be in Christmas cheer, even though we're in October right now. Oh. Because this is. I'm gonna, always in. Christmas this is gonna be cheer. seen in December. Oh. I'm just giving you the heads up, so. Jingle bells. Spin that around there, jingle bells. 
no, nobody can hear in their earbuds. I feel good about that stuff. We gotta take out this sun gear, which is not very good shape here. So I did some looking. I said, what did I say a final drive was? 25,000? Yeah, you were thinking like. In Prices the, have since went up. I looked, $36,000 for that. Um, this piece here, which I'm considering buying, is about $4,700. Now that could probably be machined and fixed, but we'd spend a lot of time doing it. And we don't have a lot of time here, believe it or not. We're going to get everything else apart. Everything else checks out and it's fixable. I may buy that new hub, so. All right, let's get this gear out of here. Snappy. Snap rings. We need to mark that out. Then only go on one way. All right, we're gonna set this thing on the floor. We gotta put this in the press and press this sun gear shaft out that way next. So. Tons. Maybe one. If it was... if you keep doing these big jobs like this, you're going to get a big press. There she went. She gone. Okay, I guess let me pick it up and floss it back out of here. She's quite fit. All right, got that sun gear out of there. We're gonna get a replacement. Next thing we're gonna do, this used to be a bearing here and here. We're gonna go ahead and pop these off. And we're gonna do it the right way with the torch. And uh, make sure that stuff's all good. This, all this stuff seems fine to me. Um, the next thing we'll do, we'll take out these little planet gears. I think they gotta press out too. And see what they're all about. those bearings off there it came out pretty good what did you do what did somebody do? oh there you go uh, so last thing we're gonna take apart here is these these uh, planet gears here 
I believe we'll take it off and I think the shaft pulls up that way and uh, we'll see if anything's majorly damaged here. We've got some wearage here but that's really not going to affect anything. Just going to make sure there's no cracks and all that good stuff. So. Alright, we got to show them what we're doing. We got this super sweet, this is from our John Deere transmission removal tool. I grilled that hole in there nice and square with the torch. I'm just trying to get it covered up, save so face. So, we're supposed to <laughs> be able to pull this pin out. They have some puller tool, I don't know what it is, but it's probably a snap on 5000. Look, I even got your socket. Mm. Probably not supposed to use power tools on our puller. Does it say that on there anymore? I don't remember saying that. Hmm. Hey, that's the wrong way. Good news is. It's coming. Get a different bolt now. Yep. Good. I'll show you guys what we're doing. See, we're pulling that pin up. We'll just keep doing that till we get her out. Next hole. Had some debris. Debris. There's gears going into them. Maybe. Alright, we got her all apart, got our planetaries out here, they have double roller bearings in them with a little spacer, I'm not sure it's broke or not, 
I see nothing wrong with these teeth. Just a noisy Pete Jackson. Right? Just a noisy Pete Jackson. Like this one right here is like. It's for racing. The way it slips in and out oh. better. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. I don't have to have synchronizers. So. Uh oh. I'm going to get me a big old shopping list together. <laughs> Luckily. Um, we have an aftermarket supplier that we can get these gears from. So, you guys are working on an 850 John Deere. Need some parts, final drive parts. Make sure you got your part number, and uh, we might be able to get you something. But uh, I'm gonna get everything ordered. We're probably gonna fire up the parts washer, I'd say. Put some of this stuff in there. And uh, oh, we need to flip that over and check that brake housing here next. Yeah, yeah. One more part we gotta check. So. We'll flip this over. The park brake housing's in here. I noticed they had a couple bolts loose, so that'd be the last piece to the puzzle on this. There you go, Bob. You got it? Yep. Oh, he got me. Oh! So, back side of this, we got some loose bolts. They've been in here, unfortunately. What did it do? I can take these out with my fingers. Oh. These are these new kind of John Deere bolts that just come out. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, this is a park brake housing. When you uh, put your lever down, it releases a brake in there, some discs and stuff like that in there. But Or when you hit the brake pedal, it applies the brakes to both final drives here. And uh, the turn locks the tractor up. So when you shut the machine off, they have big springs in there, it automatically applies the brake. So it takes like 300 pounds of oil pressure to release the brake. So if the machine's not running, you got a dead machine, these brakes will be locked up. I'm missing washers under some of these. Good and tight. Oh yeah. Somebody's been in there. Yeah. Hey, that's under some spring pressure. <laughs> Warning, be careful. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Good news is, it's all still here. This kind of looks like transmission meat. Randy was rebuilt. <clears throat> hmm. Kind of dirty. All these park brake discs. Bub, she ain't never even parked. You know, this tractor had 900 hours on it, so I don't. It's a little dirty. This needs cleaned up, don't they? Yep. Those go like that in there. Alright, we got all the discs out of there. We're going to run these two bolts down here to compress. There's a bunch of springs in there. Compress that to get a snap ring off. Yeah. Work out, buddy. It's gone. Long enough bolts, I hope. That's 
close. That's all along the boat we had. <laughs> you gotta be careful with that, folks. Hmm. I'm head over there like that somewhere in our dirty table. All right, we got a whole. All these little angry springs. These are the springs that put pressure on the disc when the transmission or the tractor shut off. So. All right, flip this over. There's one more piece that's supposed to come out here, and it's park brake housing. It's supposed to come out of that case because there's a couple of O-rings around there where this shoots oil into it. So I want to knock it out so we can replace those two O-rings too, and then we'll be. guys can see we're putting stuff up aren't we that's right we scrapped the whole idea we scrapped the whole idea we'll tell you why here in a second we figured out what's going on so john deere's everybody does this every manufacturer so we're working on an 850j final drive um and it's a 165 xxx serial numbering up final drive the tractor that come off of was a 180 serial number machine well after that 165 they had a change at 175722 for the seal so i've been doing a little research what we got going on we have a 175721 and below outer which the seal is different on they had an update on the seal so what we do have is the newer outer or inner part i guess i should say that we just stuck in a box and uh, did some learning on some John Deere part numbers too. The funny thing is they stamp the old and the new part number on here, but if you look at this, this first one is the new part number. It has a JD after it. That is the part number for this part. The old part number stamped under here with the O, they told me that means obsolete. So that confirms that as being the later serial number housing, which fits the machine it come off of. Well, if you come over here somewhere on this big chunk of metal, right here, we've got two, two part numbers on here too. And so we've got the later part number right here, but the earlier part number, which is what this is, is right here with a dot and a JD next to it. So that is an earlier final drive outer, which is not compatible with that newer inner part. So like I said, it's seal changed. So, you guys are saying, oh, why don't you just buy that part? So I did price that part out by that part number. It's $4,700. So after we found out that's not the right part, I priced the other part out. How much was it? A couple more dollars. $10,000 for the new style outer. So that kind of throwed a monkey wrench and stuff real quick. Um, so I'll go through some numbers here with you. Old outer was $4,700, the new one's $10,000. So we figured miscellaneous gears and bearings that I had to buy, like at Sun Gear Shaft, for about $6,000 in aftermarket parts. So before, if we took that $6,000 and say $5,000 there, we're about $11,000 into a rebuilt final drive. Um, if we do that $10,000, we're somewhere in $16,000. That's not even counting our labor, which is very expensive, right? Dang straight. So John Deere, I told you guys a new one is $35,000. I do offer a reman, it's $20,000. The problem is we do buy that piece where it's $16,000 just in parts. You throw a couple grand in there for labor and it don't make any sense, you know what I'm saying? So that's why we halted progress on this. So did do a little search around trying to find a used one. There's nothing around, but uh, we have a ton of good parts, don't we? Yeah. Uh, and normally that piece there from my experience doesn't usually go bad this one could be fixed and welded up but the problem is it still will not fix our uh, won't match this inner final drive so this has a bigger seal area in here 
and that one. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense to everybody, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. So we're oiling up all these parts um, so we can put them in storage and keep them for next time. So, so somebody's going to watch this video thinking they're going to scroll forward or skip forward and, and get see it rebuilt where rebuild. they know how to put it together. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <That's not laughs> anyway, we got a little bit of a part two video for this, a little bit of machine work here. So hang around. We're going to get all stuff put up. All right. Welcome to part two of this video. I know I said, I think we might be doing a little bit of machine work, but uh, machining, we didn't film that. We forgot, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So uh, we got this jewel of a dozer. She's a jewel. She is, but Kevin will make it look new again. So it's doing all kinds of funky things. I remember, right? It's like doesn't turn straight. Hey, me and Kevin actually become computer experts. Yep, we are. Um, Overnight we're, sensations. So you guys have been watching. I've actually been <laughs> sending these off to get them repaired. I kind of found out they were taking advantage of us. And uh, let's see what it does first. When we take those out. But uh, anyway. I think we may have figured out how to repair these, but uh, I'm thinking it may be in the computer. If it is, we'll take you guys along here and see what it does. All right, before we fire this up, I pulled the codes. We've got an F3 N4, and that over here says right track motor speed sensor. Um, we're going to check and see if we're reading any RPMs on that right track motor. We can do that through the computer here after we get it started. Oh, I'm losing pages. Hey, you want to see a magic trick? Go ahead. Look, it's a NASCAR dozer. It steers by itself. Huh. So, uh, we have speed on the right-hand motor and left-hand motor reading in here. I'm going to throw it here again. You guys can see that. Hey, it wants to go back. Oh, this seems kind of loose. Not run over a cover out there. So that's real not good when we're reading RPMs, but it's not going straight. Well, it's going straight in reverse. it off and see if it does it again. That code's gone now. You think so? Yep. There it goes again. Definitely not right. I'm still showing that same code. Alright, it's reading RPMs in both tracks pretty evenly. I am going to go ahead and try a speed sensor. I don't believe that is it, but you never know. There's a part number. We're actually keeping these in stock now. This is a 550H. We keep the H series and J series speed sensors in stock. I think they also fit the Ks. It's a different part number, but this fits all the H's. Um, Kevin's in there taking it out. So basically, these are different than the J series. You got to thread these in until they touch, and you back them up about a half a turn, and then you tighten that nut down. There's actually a retainer. On two flats it kind of locks it in place too so J series just go in there and they're done there's no adjusting on those but we'll put that in there and uh, see if that fixes it normally when that code pops up we wouldn't be reading any RPM so it's kind of a weird weird deal so but I've seen stranger things happen so which need oh, side cuts on that probably a little bit speed sensors right in there on top of that pump. Might get any threads. Basically there's a tone ring in there and it's just reading the RPMs off that. And it tells the uh, computer up here how fast it's turning. So if that does not fix it. We'll probably take that uh, transmission controller off. It looks pretty old. And uh, we might test a couple capacitors in there. 
kind of got to be quick on changing these because there is oil that will come out. We got pig mats under there though. Must be getting close. Oh gosh. She's under a lot of pressure. There you go. <laughs> they always under that much pressure? Yeah. Right? Smart people would have probably took the pressure off the uh, transmission tank first, but I didn't think it'd be under that much pressure. This one's nothing's been hitting the end of it. So if you see marks on the end of those, it's not good. All right, we'll get that one in and see what it does. Well, bud, I think you may have fixed it. Well, it's driving straight now. I shut it off again here I just to try it. The bill. I'm gonna pull it up here and make sure it's all right again. We're gonna get in something epic and fix a computer on YouTube, but we didn't. So we don't really know what we're doing yet. But yeah, we do. Speed sensor was reading RPM, replaced it, and it fixed it. So it's the first time for everything. Usually they don't read at all, do they? Yeah, usually they're broken. Usually they're, they're broken. broken, and we replace them, and they'll steer right. But I've never seen one do that. So it's first for everything. It was reading perfect RPM through the uh, dash monitor, but it was not steering straight. Put it in there, she's perfect. So hopefully, when that fixes it, it seems fine. It's kind of been of a what kind of video is this the final drive was bad this wasn't epic yeah i could have just thrown just all these videos in the trash <laughs> well hopefully you guys liked it you never know what we're getting into i never know when i start videotaping this stuff so if you guys want to see more of this kind of stuff just let us know in the comments below appreciate everybody watching we got a speed sensor half off i think that's going in the trash bub hey, hey. are you gonna say it what it's christmas time it's even, not Christmas. Not even though it's like 80 outside. degrees out here. <laughs> we wish everybody a Merry Christmas. This video is going to come out a couple days before Christmas. So I'm going to shuffle them around so you've got a chance to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas. There you go. You heard it from the Christmas man himself. So <laughs> we appreciate everybody watching. Hopefully everybody has a, a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And uh, make sure you're subscribed because... And I hope it's snowing right now. I hope it is too. It sure... This is, you guys are wondering, this is in November right now. It is super crazy hot out. Kevin's in shorts. Not in the Christmas spirit. No. no. But, uh, yeah, if you guys want to make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on epic stuff like this. What you working on, buddy? I don't know how to get block eater out. Block eater. We'll get her out. We'll catch you guys next time. Oh. <laughs> hey, Bob. Is it your birthday? Yeah. <laughs>